Okay, so now we discussed how the locking happens between the phases. So we assume that the received frequency is omega c, and this is just a random phase, and this is how the phase loop do blocks with the uh, incoming phase theta i by trying to change theta naught to lock with it. What happens if the frequency due to Doppler effect, the frequency of the received signal changes? So if it happens that the frequency of the received signal changes, let's say it will become omega c plus delta omega, we can show that the same process will happen. Why? Because the received signal, if the frequency changes in the received signal, for example, it will become omega c plus delta omega multiplied by t plus some theta i, then you can write this signal as a sine omega c t plus delta omega multiplied by t plus theta i. And then you can call this part, you can almost call this part theta i. But here it will not be a fixed theta i, it will be theta i t. It will be a phase that is changing with time. So you can always write any signal, any received signal, even if the change in the, uh, is in the frequency or the change is in the phase or both of them, you can always write your received signal as sine omega c t plus some phase. However, the only difference between the case where the change is in the phase only or the change is in the frequency due to Doppler effect is that theta i here will be a function of time. So you can write it as theta i, you can write it as theta i as a function of t. It's a phase that is changing with time. The same analysis that we explained for the phase loop, loop for a fixed phase applies to a phase that is changing with time. Why? Because as the phase changes with time, when it changes, the error signal is going to appear either positive or negative, and it will ask the VCO to catch whatever change that happens here. If theta i suddenly increases, the error signal will be positive, asking the VCO to increase speed to catch the phase here. When theta i decreases below theta naught, okay, then the E of t will be negative, asking the VCO to decrease speed or slow down. So the same analysis, the same explanation that we did for the phase loop loop for a fixed theta i applies exactly for a theta i that is a function of time, that is changing with time. Because as theta i is changing with time, the error signal here will keep track of theta i. The error signal will be proportional to the difference between theta i and theta naught. And this error signal is going to update the phase of the signal at the output of the PCO, allowing them to track each other. So as theta i is changing, theta naught is also changing with it. This is because we have a feedback connection. So this explains that even if the incoming frequency changes due to Doppler effect, or there is a phase shift due to reflections, due to uh, delays, or both of them, the Facebook loop will be able to synchronize to track the exact frequency and phase exactly as the incoming signal. Now, two more things to uh, say about the Facebook loop is that if the signal that we receive is received with some undesired signals that we call noise, then the phase loop loop will be able to synchronize with the sinusoidal wave in this signal, with the frequency and phase of this sinusoidal wave, and we get you here a clean sinusoidal signal that is perfectly synchronized with the frequency and phase of the received sinusoid. We call it clean because we got rid of the noise that came with the received signal. So even if you receive a sinusoid, with some noise, some undesired signals, the phase loop loop will be able to synchronize with the sinusoid and gives you a clean sinusoid that is perfectly synchronized in phase and frequency with the received sinusoid and will get read completely from the noise. One more thing is that, one more thing is that for the phase loop loop, it has some limitations. For example, if the frequency of the uh, incoming signal 
changed by a huge amount. Then the error signal here has eventually it has a limit. It has a limit. The limit is a b over two sine theta error. So uh, eventually the maximum of this signal is a b over two. It, the error signal, the error voltage here will not be able to increase above a certain limit. So if the frequency of the incoming signal increased by a huge increase, the first of node might not be able to track it because the error signal, for example, is going to increase to the maximum AB over 2 and then it will say, I can't increase above this. I cannot uh, increase above this value, which is AB over 2, and hence I cannot increase the frequency coming out from the VCO above a certain value, so I will not be able to track the frequency of the incoming signal. So the phase loop loop has a range where it can track the incoming signal outside this range, it will not be able to track, and this uh, this range is called the locking range or the lock range. So the lock range here is the range where uh, where the uh, we, that the phase loop loop will be able to track the incoming signal. Now. So far, we assumed. So far, we assumed that the received signal is A sine. But in practice, is it A sine? Do you receive a signal called A sine at the receiver? No. In the double side band, in the double side band suppressed carrier, for example, we receive a signal called M of t sine or M of t cosine. And this is a problem now. Why? Because when you receive now f of t sine instead of a sine instead of a constant, okay, then what will happen is the error signal e of t after you pass through a filter when you multiply these two signals, you will get x of t. x of t will not be a b over 2, it will be m of t. It will be m of t b over 2, and here also it will be m of t and after you pass through the low pass filter what you will get here you will get m of t b over 2 now this is a problem that will prevent us from using the phase loop loop directly at the receiver of the double side band surface carrier why because now the error signal it's it doesn't depend only on theta e on the error between the two phases actually it depends on m of t why is this the problem? Because sometimes, for example, for example, sometimes there will be a big error between the two phases, between theta i and theta naught, there will be a big error. At a certain instant, assume that there is a big error between theta i and theta. This is supposed to give you high error signal, large error signal. But assume that by chance, at this instant, m of t was zero. Your signal, your voice signal was zero, or it was very small. This will make E of T equal zero. If M of T is zero at this instant of time, then this will give you an error signal that is zero. Although there is a large error between the two phases, between theta i and theta naught, between theta i and theta naught, there is a large gap, there is a large difference, but the error signal is going to be zero. Why? Because now it depends also on m of t. Because m of t was zero at this instant. So this will cause an error. And vice versa. Sometimes the error between the two angles, between theta i and theta naught, is small. So it's supposed to give you small error signal. But because m of t is large at this instant of time, this will give you a large error signal. So it will give you a large error signal, causing the VCO to change its frequency with a very large amount, causing disturbance through the operation of the, of the phase load loop. So here, when m of t was constant, when we had a here, the error depended only on the, uh, the error signal depended only on the difference between the two phases. But now, when we receive m of t sine or m of t cosine, the error signal will depend not only on the error between the two phases, it will depend also on the value of m of t, which will cause improper operation of the phase log loop. That's why 
That's why we cannot use the phase load loop directly at the receiver of the double side band suppressed carrier, for example. And we have to use it within a larger circuit in order to guarantee that it will work properly. So, again, because of this reason, because in the analysis of our phase load loop, we assume the constant multiplied by sine, but in practice, we receive m of t multiplied by sine or m of t multiplied by cosine, which will disturb the error signal here because now it depends on m of t we cannot use this phase load loop directly in the, at the receiver of the double side band suppressed carrier and we have to use it within a larger circuit in order to guarantee that it will work properly and this is what we are going to see in the next few videos we'll study two methods we'll study two methods where we are going to use the phase load loop within larger circuits the first method is called the squaring method, and the second method is called cost slope. These two methods are examples of synchronous or coherent detectors that are used in double side band suppressed carriers specifically. For single side band, the stitcher side band, we use other circuits, other uh, synchronous or coherent demodulators, but we are going to give only these two examples which can be used only with the double side band suppressed carrier. We'll see you in the next video with the first method, uh, which is the squaring method. See you.